Mesh networking. What is it? How would we use it? How is it better than the other things that we've done before? Um, you don't have to be a crazy networking geek that's sitting there programming and coding and all that stuff to really understand it or to set it up for your served agencies, whether it's an event, special event, or just an incident. Um, so how do we help our agencies? So right now, a lot of our stuff is voice communications, RF email, um, such as WinLink. Um, and we're doing those at special events. We might occasionally do uh, an exercise, and every once in a while, we'll be able to do an actual, some type of incident or missing persons or something like that. Um, it just kind of varies on where you're at and what kind of relationship you have, as well as where, what kind of infrastructure those served agencies already have. In an urban environment, you might find that you're used less by those public safety agencies than you might be in a very rural setting where um, they'll take any help they can get. Um, other things we typically offer is HF, you know, in, in a time of a disaster. So outside of uh, a real disaster actually happening, usually uh, we're playing with it on field day or an exercise such as SimCom or um, another local exercise you might have. But what else is there? Well, we got mesh networking. Mesh networking uh, takes basically packet packet radio, wind link, you know, those those digital or data forms, you know, even comparing it to like the D-Star digital modes or um, Fusion or, or some of those other modes that you can send data on, and it takes it to a whole nother level. We're able to do a very, very high-speed data transfer. You can set up phones. You can put on cameras. I mean, any file. I mean, you can send anything over the Internet. It's really an Internet-based type system. So... I mean, the sky's the limit, really. Everything these days is IP-based. So it brings a whole new world to what our served agencies really want and need, especially in the rural and the smaller towns and things like that. And it has brought Aries in my area back to the forefront of saying, hey, those guys might be able to do that for us. Those guys might be able to help us out. Um, it's, you know, at least once a month, I'm getting a call in our area from someone, hey, we have this issue during this incident or during this event or something like that. Would you guys be able to solve that? You know, usually it revolves around cameras, um, occasionally phones and things like that. But it starts opening their eyes up to there's people out there, Aries Races, that are willing to assist in these endeavors. And it works out really well. It's really helped our... our uh, uh, partnerships so mesh networking so we got the hf vhf uhf digital modes we got the you know 300 baud 1200 9600 that's your typical packet things like that um works great for text you're not able to send you know and i guess you could do slow scan tv for you know your images and stuff but it's slow it's not it's good for long distance, non line of sight stuff where you can't actually, you know, you're you're sending something across the state. It's it's not too bad, especially for like email and things like that. Um, we also have like the D Star, um, the data high speed data. That's 128 kilobytes a second. It isn't bad um, for what it is, um, especially since you can do stuff with it you can't do with mesh, um, but vice versa. On mesh, I can I can give you 150 megabyte a second link. Now that's all things being perfect, but I can again send your cameras, send files. If you give me a zipped file of 50 megs of of data that I need to send from the command post out to you know a field unit, we can do it. Any app, IP application, it's internet style interface. So you're using, you can use a browser, you can you can set up Raspberry Pis and and anything. I mean, just like a lot of things we do in ham radio, th the sky's the limit. I mean, it's it's a network for tinkering. I mean, it's it's really cool. So Arden, as we're gonna call, started out originally as broadband hamnet. A lot of people have heard about that. Um, otherwise known as HSMMM, MESH, Multimedia, MESH. 
and that was using the blue linksys routers and kind of hacking some of that stuff and it's it's kind of based on that same thing but what they've done is they've taken the ideas and the development from using an in-home router and applied it to commercially available rf equipment that is actually designed to go on a tower much higher powered what weatherproof things that are design that can go 300 feet in the air on a tower and can talk for 10 12 plus miles or more and gave us even higher speed capability and it, it's just amazing where we've come from from using the blue linksys routers now those were great in the day but what we can do with you know a, a little 40 dollar router now um like the microtech hap and stick this software on it it just blows that stuff out of the water. Um, the distances, the speeds, things like that. Um, the, just the the VPN capabilities, all of that. So that's where we're at. And a lot of people with the mesh, when I when I mention the mesh, that this is what they're thinking about because this was historically a thing. But we've gone to the next level. So what is Arden? Um, Arden is a self-configuring, self-healing. Now I say self-configuring because most of the nitty-gritty IP addresses, routing tables, things like that has all been figured out. You don't have to figure that out. Basically, when you set up a node, and we'll do that in, um, in another video here, the next video, when you set up the node, once you've installed the firmware, all you have to tell it is your call sign, which is the SSID, much like we use in Packet or APRS, the RF channel you're using. So if you want it to connect to something else, it's got to be on the same frequency of course and the bandwidth so you can use 10 meg 20 meg 5 meg things like that that's just you know how much frequency bandwidth you're actually using and you set it and you go now you can adjust power and things like that but you don't have to you can leave that set you know whatever you need to communicate but that's it now you can start, once you get your connections, it starts automatically figuring out who's my neighbors, who's my peers, who's my far neighbors, and starts figuring out all that routing. So you can just browse, basically, your network and just cruise through it. You don't have to worry about static IPs and changing all this stuff. Now, if you want to get advanced into it, you can do that. Self-healing, what do I mean by that? I mean, you look at this image here on the, on the picture. You see the blue and dots and the, the different ones. There's more than one connection connecting everything. So if the red dot wants to get to one of the light blue dots, it can take multiple paths to get there. So if one path goes down, whether it's a power failure or whatever, there's always another route to get there. So in a true mesh, even if you lose a node, you can still get there. Now, you might not have as great a connection through those other nodes or you might not have as direct of a route so it might cost a little bit more in speed or, or data but you can still get there and you can still communicate which is what we're ultimately trying to do is to communicate so it allows for a redundant communications because of that healing uh, properties uses off-the-shelf equipment i'll show some of the equipment here in a little bit but the equipment is readily available and most of it you can buy for 50 60 dollars or, or less i mean it's it's very inexpensive compared to, I mean, even the portable radios we typically buy. And then high-speed data transfer, I touched on this already. You know, we get that, the 802.11n protocol, you know, we can get up to that 144 megabytes a second. You know, that's, you can put a lot of data on that. Now, it's something to be mindful. You don't want to abuse all that data, but um, you can put a lot of things on it and, and serve a lot, of, a lot of services on your network. And then uses non-shared channels. Um, so we have, as hams, privileges on 900 meg, 2.4, and 5.8 gig. Now 3.4, as you see, I put some asterisks on there. Sorry about that. Jumped ahead. You'll see I put the asterisks on there. The FCC just ruled, and we've been fighting this for about a year and a half, that the 3.4 gig, we were secondary users on that, um, to the federal government, just ruled that we have to start to vacate the 3.4 gig uh, band. Now, part of the band, and we'll jump to that in a second here, this is the order by the FCC. Part of the band has to be vacated by November 9th. The other half of the band, which we still have channels in, 
has no date set yet that we need to vacate. Um, speculation said something around 2022 that we would have to vacate it. Um, so I would I would avoid um, at this time purchasing anything for the 3.4 gig band, but uh, we will we will see what happens as as it appears there are still some decisions to be made as far as this. But at this point, it looks like we have for the most part lost this band. So sad news there, but that's sometimes how it goes. In my other than satellite um, and some Arden use, there isn't a lot of amateur use in it that I've seen. I could be wrong. Um, in other parts of the country, maybe there's more. But I think that's part of the reason it was easily taken was maybe we weren't using it enough. But it's also finding equipment that's in it. So, so mesh topography, when we talk about this, is I, I kind of think about it in three different tiers. You have a backbone, which is, which is let's say, Sock County. My county, we have our mesh network. And then Dane County builds their mesh network, and we're working on it down there. We're not going to have five different nodes. I mean, it would be cool, but five different nodes between Dane County and Sock County probably talking to each other. We're going to have a high-gain dish system that's connected between those two points. So to connect the, the two county systems together. So it's a high level, you know, choose a couple towers, things like that, that have high bandwidth dishes connected to each other. So you think of Sock County as a as a hub and then Dane County as a hub. And then we just got one, maybe eventually two spindles that are connecting each other. And then in Sock County, that hub, it's going to the different cities. So so that backbone is connected to a node or two in Baraboo and a node or two in the Dells and a node or two in Reedsburg. But then inside of that town, then your mesh is, is really taking over where you might have one or two nodes or one or two of your second layer, as you see in this image, of your relay nodes that's providing that saturated coverage to your town. And then your deployed nodes, think of that as your, your home, your node that's at your house, maybe at a fire station, an EOC, things like that. They're connecting into these relay nodes. So you really got three levels. And then maybe a deployed node, maybe that is a portable node. You set up for a special event in a downtown area or at a park or or along a, a marathon or something like that. A deployed node, you might it might be on a, a 10-foot tripod shooting to the water tower in town that's carrying your relay node. And then your deployed node is able to... You can have cameras hooked up to it right there. Or maybe it's just relaying again to... Uh, a camera set up that is, you know, only on a can't see that water tower or something like that. So you can really daisy chain these out, but then they can all mesh in into each other. So really at the town or the city level, that's where you're seeing that true mesh. And then as those high backbone level, it might look more like a, an actual point to point or a um, hub and spoke system. It really depends on your area and what you're able to accomplish. But one big thing that we've seen when we've designed these is people want to put up like an omni antenna and just have everybody connect to that. Well, one thing you have is, is channel collisions. As you look here, most of your stuff under 100 bucks. a lot of it under $75 or $50. Um, some of the things you'll see, uh, the rocket here plus antenna, Typically, the antenna is going to be, I mean, you can put a dish antenna on that. That's just the radio is the rocket. Then the antenna, it can be a, a sector antenna, which is uh, your kind of looks like a cellular antenna. The 900 meg one, you can put a Yagi on it, dish, or an Omni. So you have a lot of different options. A lot of these other ones, these are all integrated. So radio and antenna are all in one device. So on the screen here, you see this little uh, dish thing on here on the right side. That's a nano beam. So that's radio and a dish all in one piece. They're about 60 bucks, $65. Um, down here on the bottom, this is a nano station. It's a small sector antenna. It doesn't have a lot of gain, but 
they're about anywhere from seventy to eighty dollars, depending on which one you buy. There is a sixty dollar smaller one as well, but they work great, great for starting. And then this hap, you know, this hap's about forty five fifty dollars, and they're great. You can plug them into your home network. You can get on. You can use them to put internet onto your no- network, uh, run a VPN to other networks, and you can even power another node through it because uh, it's got PoE pass through. With these equipment, um, here's a, some of the different brands that uh, Arden is now supporting versus just the blue router. We're going from 10, 20 milliwatts to 200 to 600 milliwatts. I mean, that's 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 huge, especially when you're talking microwave and, and really high gain. I mean, you can get a 34 dB gain dish. And to put that on a half watt transmitter, that I mean, you're putting out some pretty good actual radiated power. Blue Linksys routers—they're not designed to be running in 20 below weather, but these devices are. And depending on what how your setup is, you might be able to get a point-to-point link 20, 30, 40 miles with the right setup between the right points. Of course, you know it is still line of sight, so it's not like you know you're definitely not doing that if you got a tree in the way. But if you have a couple nice towers that can link two areas, distant areas together, um, the possibilities, they're just, <laughs> they really are. The sky's the limit. They're endless. So what about things you want to hook up to the mesh? It's really endless. So, you know, file servers, you can do cloud sharing. There's a lot of free software out there. You can just run it right off of a Raspberry Pi. You could set up a full-blown server if you wanted to. Um just about anything. I mean, talk about video conferencing, phone linking, wind link, internet, you know, web servers. It's it's anything. It's just a highway. We just got to populate it. That's really the uh, gist of it, just for the overview. I know there's a lot to digest, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions, but uh, feel free to, to let us know what those questions are.